All right, everyone, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. Uh, my name is Ryan Oystatcher, and I'm the Senior Director of Marketing here at Five9. I'm joined by Rob Cordini, who's a Microsoft MVP in Cloud and Data Center, and also our Director of Product Management. Uh, we're very pleased and excited to show you our latest version of Five9 Manager Data Center, uh, version 2.2. We introduce uh, a lot of new functionality uh, for a variety of use cases, and we're excited to share with that with you today. Uh, that being said, uh, if you're new to Five9, uh, we're uh, a global uh, unified cloud management and security platform, uh, primarily serving uh, the Microsoft Cloud platform. Uh, we have over a thousand customers worldwide. Uh, we're, we have uh, over a hundred thousand uh, users uh, um, administrating their uh, environments with our software, and uh, to date, we have over five million virtual machines managed and protected. Uh, if you're not familiar with Robert Cordini, uh, like I mentioned before, Robert Cordini is a, a multi-time MVP in Cloud and Data Center. Uh, we're lucky to have him on the 5.9 team, bringing his knowledge in Microsoft Azure, uh, Microsoft Hyper-V, and everything Microsoft Cloud. Uh, so with that being said, Rob, I'm going to go ahead and kick it over to you so that you can uh, give the audience uh, an idea of what they're working with with 5.9 Manager Data Center 2.2. Awesome, Ryan. Thank you. And uh, thank you for everyone joining our webinar today. Um, today um, we're going to little talk about um, um, about MDC 2.2, our um, release that just came out. And we're obviously I'll give you uh, for the, those of you that are not familiar with MDC, I'll give you a brief overview of what MDC does. So our agenda, agenda today is I'm going to give you a five nine manager data center overview, um, and it, and we're also going to give you a 5.9 Manager 2.2 features overview, and that's literally about our new and enhanced features, and then we'll all should go into a demo. Um, at the moment, what I'm going to do right now, um, because it does take a few minutes to set up, is I'm actually going to set up um, a lab. This is where you can go and um, essentially uh, bring up your uh, a virtual lab, and you can try out 5.9 Data Center, uh, Manager Data Center for yourself. So if you go to 5.9.com, And you go to resources at the top, um, you'll see something that says virtual labs under the drop down. This is where you can actually check out our other products. Now, um, we also have another product called Cloud Security, and that's all about um, securing your cloud in, um, environment. Um, so you can see here, once I'm under the virtual labs, you click on launch VLAB and you can jump right in. Now, these VLABs need um, a few minutes to spin up. So that's why I figured I'd start at the beginning and show everybody where you can actually jump in. So as you can see here, it's actually loading lab content and this is where it's essentially gonna boot up the lab. So let me get back to the presentation and we'll get started. Oops, sorry about that. Oops. Apologize. Presentation issues, there we go. All right, does everybody see my screen? Hey Rob, uh, I see a black screen right now. Okay, I apologize, there's something up with PowerPoint. I'm also, uh, uh, I also got a feedback that uh, you're, you're, you're quiet. So if you could just speak a little louder into the microphone. Sure. Uh, not a problem, not a problem. There we go. Always uh, the demo demons sometimes. Okay. Let's try that again, guys. Absolutely. There we go. Okay. Let's get started. Awesome. Um, so we're going to uh, talking about here, and I'm introducing uh, Five Nine Manager Data Center. Um, does my voice sound okay now, Ryan? I think it sounds okay. Uh, for those of you in the audience, if you're having any audio issues, you know, feel free to let me know in the questions bar, and and I'll direct Rob. Absolutely great. So we're here to talk about uh, Five Nine Manager Data Center 2.2, our recent release. Um, where we uh, are a lot of our new features center around you know software defined networking which is a very hot new topic and technology that is being deployed these days rob i'm seeing a blank screen really 
Yes. How about now? Uh, still a blank screen. Anything? Oh, there we go. Now we see the screen. All right, I apologize. So what, whatever you're doing. Yep, okay, great. <laughs> so we're here to talk about 5.9 Manager Data Center 2.2. And um, we're talking about some of the new and uh, key features and enhancements that we actually have done in 2.2. And then we, I'm also going to give you a brief overview. But a lot of some of our key features that we came out with with Manager Data Center 2.2 is um, essentially uh, software-defined networking, which is a really hot topic right now. Um, and allows you to deploy those software-defined and manage those software-defined networks. Also, fire-level um, restore, and that's essentially where you can back up whole VMs and then essentially do um, a, a individual file or pick and pick and choose files within that VM to do in a restore um, at the same location or maybe at an alternative location. Um, we also have a lot of uh, Active Directory integration um, features that we've enhanced. Um, now we've put in a lot more dialog boxes so you can essentially you know, understand on getting these groups properly instead of having to type in that. Um, we've also added a lot of RBAC permissions so you have the ability to do automatic mapping. So you can map from a group that's an MDC to an AD group and then as you add users to that AD group they automatically um, have permissions within MDC. Um, we also have dynamic optimization. <laughs> And um, that's really about um, really optimizing your load. So you have a four node cluster, eight node cluster, et cetera. Um, and so you essentially want to balance your VMs across that load so you don't have maybe one particular VM um, essentially uh, running a lot more of the load. You want to balance that load. So that's a lot of the new features that we've done. So let's dive into some of that. First that we're going to dive into right now is uh, software defined networking. And so software-defined networking, um, what we've introduced in here is essentially full support um, via the same GUI. Um, you don't have to essentially use different um, APIs, um, a different network controller, or anything management-wise. Um, if you're familiar with the Microsoft products that do equivalent like uh, SCVMM or SCOM, there's a lot of disaggregated uh, management there. You have to use a lot of different tools where you can do uh, SDN deployment um, right within one tool. So you have full support for these SDN deployments. You know, you can really do a lot of additional parameters around SDN. You can create, update, or these CRUD functions around logical networks, virtual networks, et cetera. And then essentially you can also do read load balancers and Mac, um, uh, MAC address pools. But the bottom line on all of this is you can now deploy and manage SDN infrastructure without having the headache of inducing, um, headache inducing combination of Windows Server PowerShell, REST APIs, SCVMM, and um, uh, with our easy to use interface. Next up is file level restore. Now file level restore is an awesome um, piece of functionality that we've introduced. And this gives you the ability to browse virtual machine files or VHDs and essentially um, restore files or individual files within that. So you have database back or database files in there or some kind of mission critical data that's in there that you need to essentially restore from. You can do you know, alternative locations or uh, push this to the original virtual machine. Um, we can do also rollbacks, et cetera. All right, I'm on to the Active Directory integration enhancements. Um, and this is really um, you know, about enhancing your experience around Active Directory. So you have that similar look and feel when you're using like Active Directory users and groups. It's a very similar look and feel when you're using um, our Manager Data Center product. You, know, you have the ability to pick AD objects on the fly uh, or even groups. Um, and as I mentioned, we have the ability to do user groups that are mad to, uh, matched to uh, AD. So you have that corresponding RBAC, um, role-based access controls within um, Manager Data Center. And that essentially gets you to lock down certain aspects of Manager Data, um, data Center. Um, bottom line on this is the feature can reduce the time and effort needed to manage user lists and permissions. So you don't have to maintain two. So on to the last point on our one its new features is dynamic optimization. And this is actually an awesome feature. And this is about basically balancing out your load across your cluster. Um, there are times that 
you definitely don't, you, you know, having all the VMs on one or two hosts, you could get potentially, even if you have them thin provisioned, um, get into something called CPU um, contention. And then essentially you, get, you start hitting performance issues and stuff of that nature. Where dynamic optimization is essentially uh, balancing out that load so all those VMs are balanced across your cluster properly. So the bottom line is that automatic ba balancing of workloads, you know, across Hyper-V hosts is really important to ensure your environments, you know, performs to standard at all times. And as I mentioned, you don't want to get hit with performance hits. Um, we, we really made it easy, to, you know, introducing these new options um, for selecting multiple hosts within a group. Oh, and that's, and the finally is interface and backup wizard enhancements. Um, we've got a lot of UI enhancements within Manager Data Center. Um, now you have a lot of stuff where uh, monitoring alert settings where you can do resource and event-based monitoring alerts are now combined in a single easy to use view. Um, you know, we also have um, dealt with the management service. That's essentially what um, does all the monitoring and all the agents that run on, on um, Hyper-V host, they report back to the management service. Um, and admins can now um, view all previous settings, including passwords and the management server console. Um, all of our wizards have been enhanced to include relevant detailed descriptions of objects, especially when you're going through certain aspects and you're not familiar with the product. It's very important to get a lot of descriptions to understand, um, putting in categories or even credentials um, and understanding why you need those. And hey, then, Rob. Sure. Sorry for interrupting. Uh, could you please move your mic uh, maybe closer to, to your mouth or increase that? the volume? How about that? Uh, give me a quick test. Test one, two. Test one, two. Mo louder. Testing one, two. Testing one, that, two. That's perfect. OK. So administrators um, on a lot of the, uh, oh, let me go back to the last point on UI improvements is logical view. Um, the logical view tab in the object tree can now be only viewed by 5.9 manager data center administrators. So you can get proper permissions and really deal with those RBAC controls. And then there are some backup wizard enhancements. And that's all, you know, basically giving administrators um, now can create backup jobs for a group of objects. Um, users can no longer edit backup jobs that were created by admins, again, the, uh, that are back controls. And then you um, backup wizard language has been re reworded and validated. So you have a lot of those details to understand exactly what you're doing during that process. So we're on to the actual demo. Um, our, in the background, we actually should have our lab already ready to roll. And we'll bring it up. As you can see in this lab, um, this is actually a, a great training lab. This gives you the ability to understand how to use our product and really go into detail on some of this stuff. Um, what I'm actually going to do is um, go through the wizard here and actually minimize some of this stuff so we can actually do a demo where I don't need any of all that. And just one moment here. Oh, another demo issue. One moment. There we go. Oops. So I didn't type in the password right. All right, here we go. There we go. We're in the environment. So as you can see on the desktop is the 5.9 Manager Data Center console. As uh, I mentioned before, 5.9 Manager Data Centers is essentially three components. A console where you can install pretty much anywhere. Um, so you can essentially be on your workstation and console. We also have the uh, Manager Data Center service. And essentially that's dealing with all the manage uh, the actual monitoring, the agent, um, the uh, agent and log collection stuff of that nature, and um, then you have an agent that actually runs on the host, and that's what's essentially what's reporting back to us about metrics around the host, VM, etc. And then obviously allowing us to do certain types of control on that um, host for VM CRUD functions. I'm logging into the um, Manager Data Center um, console right now, and so as you can see um, within this product is we have the Hyper-V management here, and this is where you can actually see your VMs and even your cluster. 
um, here. And this is where you can do all your stuff with VM CRUD functions like um, creating a VM, importing a VM, um, creating a VHD disk, um, or editing an existing disk. Potentially, maybe it's thin provisioned and you want to go back to thick provisioned or you want to extend that disk. Um, adding servers, and that can be done where you can do a discovery. And that's a couple different methods on that. Um, where essentially you put in your domain credentials. You can do domain picker here and um, pop in your credentials and it will go through a wizard. Let me see if I can get the one for administrator. Here we go. And you can do a manual where you're just putting the IP address in there or the IP range, et cetera. Or you can do one uh, search through AD or you can do an I a IP range. And, and then go from there and, and pick and choose which one you want to put um, the essentially the uh, agent on. Just be aware that you do have to have certain ports open like WRM and um, DCOM, which is port 135. Um, after that, it, does, it goes through and does a discovery process. I'm not going to let it go through that, but as you can see, um, it goes through that. And then at that point, we can push out the agent to it. Um, so uh, that's essentially the process of doing that. Very easy process. And now if you think about the Microsoft landscape and if you've dealt with like um, SCOM or even SCVMM, you really have to use both of those products on top of the built-in tools to really do all, a lot of these functions um, where we have it really under a single pane of glass. Um, now, if you look uh, beyond that, we can get into here is you have the data stores and this is where you're presenting up disks um, to, um, up to our uh, up to the essentially the hypervisors so we can attach them to VM or we're put VMs on those disks, et cetera. We can even do pass through, et cetera. Um, this gives you the ability to essentially, you know, as you can see here, VM storage. To, is it an SMB storage? Is it, is it cluster shared volume storage? Or is it local storage on that particular um, host? Um, and also you have uh, ISO libraries where you can create those somewhere and template libraries. And then obviously your backup library because We'll get into it in a minute, but you, we also have the ability to back up VMs, and I talked about file level restore. Now we also have monitoring, um, and now the monitoring tab is great. Let me actually wait for this pop up and actually go back one thing here. And before I go into monitoring, I actually skipped one tab. This is the networking, and this gives you the ability to go in here and edit your vSwitches, um, delete a V switch, um, make a couple settings on the particular V switch where you where you're typically doing that in Hyper V Manager or even SCVMM. Um, this gives you the ability to go in there and see if it's uh, allowed for the management OS and that type of stuff. Um, so I just wanted to cover that. Next is monitoring, um, and this is where you get into metrics. You know where you can see the metrics around your um, data stores, obviously, and what you're using in, uh, on disk space availability, um, VMware Health. Um, are we at certain criteria of health? Is there a certain amount of event logs going on, et cetera? And if you notice, there's also a latest alarm section. And what's cool about that is essentially you can put on filters and these alarms are essentially all the different activities that are happening on these hosts and VMs. Um, so really a dashboard view that gives you a real single pane so you can kind of see exactly what's going on in, in kind of a short order. Um, you now if I highlight here one of these VMs, I can actually, and now these VMs are turned off um, at the moment, but if they were turned on uh, and um, functioning, we'd actually see the CPU, me memory, disks, and ne uh, network statistics. So you can see those live statistics on a v per VM basis. So again, you know, it's really cool to be able to do that. Um, you can also do it on a per, per node basis or per cluster, which makes up the two nodes. Um, and also within this particular, um, yeah, part of the MDC interface is we also have optimization where you can configure your optimization groups. There are reasons why you would have either affinity or non-affinity groups, uh, meaning um, maybe you don't, for example, exchange environments. Um, typically, you're building out redundant exchange environments and or even SQL ones. You wouldn't typically want um, the first and the second host that are replicating on the same host. It's a single point of failure for you. So you can build out optimization groups to essentially say, okay, this loads need to be balanced this way, et cetera, and thresholds. Um, next up is um, 
Oops. And by the way, if you notice, there's CPU, memory, network at the top, and you can get a little bit more granular on that stuff. And as you can see here, memory consumed. Um, now we're on to backup. And backup is uh, really cool. And this gives you the ability to create backups. And whether it's on-prem, and that meaning um, you're backing up to some medium like a NAS or, some, uh, or a SAN or something of that nature, uh, via SMB or a cluster shared volume um, that's being presented up. Um, or And you can also back up to Azure. Um, so if you highlight one of these VMs, um, you can hit create. And once you hit create, um, you can go through here, name the job. Do you want encryption and compression on the job? Um, what's the block size of the job? Um, also, whoops, let's turn off the encryption and compression for the moment so I can push through here. What are the ones that I actually want to actually back up? Or we could do it by a group. Now, if I had categories and then I tagged different VMs, I can then go in there and pick that category that would essentially be part of that group. Um, and next to hit next, and then at that point, we need to know what storage. Now, we do copy um, the data locally before we push it to Azure. So if you want stuff that's only on Azure and not locally, which I don't think it would be the case for most customers, they would want a local copy than Azure. But if you did, you still need a place to store those copies while you're um, in the process of uploading that data. So that's why it's prompting it during that part here. So, um, and if I hit OK, I can hit Next here. And then this is where I can get into the Azure backup. And all that's needed, it's very, very simple. Um, there are so many ways to access these APIs. We've made it super simple. All you need to do is put in your account key on, uh, on Azure when you create a storage blob for your backups, and, um, and then the account key. Um, it's pretty simple. You go to Azure, create a blob storage. Um, there are, uh, once you've created blob storage, you'll notice there's uh, a section that says account key and security keys. At that point, that's cut and paste information you're ready to roll and you can kick off a backup so a lot of again it's a lot of great functionality here that where you can do um you know backup to azure backup to on-prem and then you have that ability to do file level restore um you know at that granular level so you don't have to you know back essentially restore an entire vm and then do a once and then bring it up cherry pick what you need out of it etc the problem with that is, just to give you an FYI, is that powering up a VM, especially that's old or older, to get some piece of data potentially introduces a security risk. So um, if you can avoid those type of things, um, that that's perfect way to go about it. And File Over Restore helps you with that. Next is um, SDN management or software-defined networking. This is where you can essentially create these software-defined networks. Um, and once you've created a, a, a network controller and an SDN endpoint, this point you can essentially build out your logical networks, your virtual networks, and then obviously your physical interfaces and that stuff of that nature. And it's all can be done in a single pane of glass um, for your environment. Um, makes it very, very simple. Now, I will explain to you that there's four or five different tools that you have to go through with Microsoft in order to accomplish the same thing. And it's, you know, PowerShell, um, some CLI, REST um, API stuff, and a number of other type stuff. So this is all avoided with our product. Essentially, you can deal with our solution. Essentially, you can do all this within one product and not have to worry about all these um, disaggregated interfaces. And then we're into admin. Um, this is where, where you set all your RBAC permissions and your ta and some of your tagging. So um, our what I call categories at the top here. And um, you can also manage your tenants. Um, if you're in a multi-tenant environment like an MSP would have, where there have different um, tenants that are parts of that cluster. So this is where you can deal with those controls and then our back roles and where you assign, you know, certain types of access, read only, basic, uh, full access and what that actually means and what parts of the application. So that's really MDC in a nutshell. MDC is a product that really is an alternative to SCVMM. Um, I will say that SCVMM along with SCOM is one of those is a product that that has a lot of granularity, but it's a very complex product. And 
on top of that, it's one of those things that you do have to have almost someone full time on it. And if you don't, you're not actually properly utilizing it. Uh, where if you're in Five Nine Manager, this is a very easy to use product. Everything's wizard based. It's very easy to understand the metrics on here. Um, and we go and we can do that some of that granular and you know granular monitoring, et cetera. So again, we're, we're providing and even with backup. We're displacing DPM, which is uh, System Center Data Protection Manager, um, and essentially we have that all in one tool instead of having three products. Essentially, so you know it's a great thing: single pane of glass, single uh, single tool to be able to manage your entire Hyper V infrastructure. I think that I've covered everything, Ryan. What are your thoughts? Uh, no, I, I, I think you, you did that good. Um, we have a couple of questions here. Um, sure. Rob, does that conclude your demo of the 2.2 version? Yes, that does, include, that does conclude the 2.2 version. Um, as I mentioned, as I was going through um, MDC Data Center, you've obviously you've seen some of the uh, highlights and newer some of our new features like SDN deployment um, or and management and deployment, um, the backup features that we have for um, file level restore, and then as you saw it as I was going through some of those wizards, um, we had a lot of those descriptions and UI updates, um, and obviously Active Directory um, dialog boxes and stuff of that nature. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, sure. So I have a, a couple questions here. Um, one question is, um, you know, around uh, the SDN uh, in management. Um, can you tell me, uh, here's the question, um, what does uh, SDN management for uh, 5.9 look like in the future and will it be supported in uh, 5.9 cloud security? That is something, uh, SDM management is definitely something we're pushing on. Um, we're only gonna continue to mature it and bring it to multi-cloud. Um, as for, um, what was the second part of that question again? Uh, uh, SDN support with 5.9 cloud security. Oh, yes. That is something um, I can't really go into now, but it's simply definitely that we're on, that's on the roadmap um, to essentially, um, we'll say unification. And I don't want to go any further, but it's a teaser. But it's very something very exciting we're working on. Okay, great. Uh, we also have a question. Um, can the backup target be a NAS uh, dedupe device like data domain? Um, yeah, it can be a NAS dedupe device. We're only looking for storage. As long, and that stuff is done at a lower level than what we would be putting on it. So yeah, it wouldn't be a problem. As long as it's presented in something that we can see, um, or essentially Hyper-V can see. Okay, great. Uh, I have another question. Um, uh, one question is, let's see if I can read this, pull this up here. Um, are you, is the Active Directory support uh, only on-premise Active Directory, or is it also Azure Active Directory? Currently, I believe we're because uh, there are some fundamental differences, um, but we do have it's uh, on-prem Active Directory um, for the moment. Um, if you're dealing with uh, Azure Active Directory, a lot of people that have on-prem will do it, something called a DirSync um, directory synchronization, and so essentially that is a replica of your on-prem Active Directory. Um, that is something that we do are planning to support down the line, um, but um, for now, to be honest with you, you wouldn't lose any functionality if you're doing DirSync um, going the other route. Okay, great. Uh, I also have a question that, that I can actually answer. Uh, what is the pricing model for 5.9 Manager Data Center? Uh, and the answer is uh, per host and per VM. Uh, so a very uh, cost effective uh, model uh, for our customers. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, we have uh, another question and, and it's just a re-review and, and I'm fine with doing this. Um, could you review uh, the dynamic optimization improvement uh, one more time, Rob? Sure, not a problem. So um, dynamic optimization, let's pop it over here and get over here into the summary. Okay, 
So let me highlight a VM and a node. So what you can do is you can go into configure optimizer and then you can go in here and create essentially a group. And that group um, can be a group of machines that are essentially allowed to cluster among certain amount of resources. And then also you also have resource thresholds. Um, and I'm talking about, I'm sorry, when I say uh, cluster across resource, I mean, I meant was cluster across a cluster, essentially. You're allowing those VMs to use this on, on particular nodes in the cluster. Now, you also have resource thresholds. Um, and I'm gonna just open this up a little bit. Let's say cluster. And you can go in here. So this is the more important part of it. Um, and this is where you want dynamic optimization to really uh, work for you is that where your thresholds are. So for example, if one particular host has 30 VMs and it's running over 81%, that's when it's time to initiate a migration or you know something dynamic to move a VM over to lower below the threshold. So now let's say it was at 90% or 95, it would move VMs enough to drop below your threshold. So again, 80% you know can be a default threshold. I like to go a little lower, especially if you're running any kind of antivirus potentially on that machine or some kind of agent that's not part of that production application. You definitely want to take an account for that overhead. But that's what essentially dynamic optimization is about, is about moving VMs once you hit certain thresholds. And then obviously you can deal with groups like affinity type stuff. Hopefully that answers your question. Yes, thank you. Uh, and then our final question uh, for the day is, uh, I'm uh, says I'm currently um, on five nine manager standard. I'm currently a five nine manager standard customer, uh, but I can see that this has a lot more functionality. Uh, could you explain the differences at a high level between five nine manager standard and five nine manager data center? Sure. Um, we um, there are definitely uh, some things that we've dropped off. Um, we don't do the SDN stuff. Um, from we, from standard. From standard, correct. Um, we don't. Um, I'm going to have to go get a full list. To be honest with you, um, I, I have to look no, at the that, full list. No, that's on okay. There. And and I can actually I can actually speak to this. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, a bit Rob is you know from from one part. Um, there's uh, the five nine manager data center is going to have the multi tenancy support. Uh, it's just going to yeah. scale a lot better for for larger environments. Uh, there's backup, the SDN management, so a more robust, more SCVMM experienced. Um, you know, whereas uh, um, you know standard is going to be your lower level, smaller environments, lab environments. Um, only uh, one or two hosts uh, type environment. And then also uh, Five9 Manager Data Center is going to be the flagship um, Hyper-V and, and future of Azure management platform going uh, server. So um, when we're talking about Windows Server 2019 and, and forward, uh, you know, Five9 Manager Data Center is going to be the place to be. Uh, I do have a follow-up question. Uh, from our NAS, uh, from the NAS question earlier, is um, will this application be able to support large-scale enterprise-level backup for Hyper-V VMs? Example: 300 VMs with about 400 terabytes. Yeah, uh, why wouldn't it be? It's not yeah. any different from backing up 10 or 20. Um, it's really about making sure you have the proper resources to support um, a 5.9 manager data center. Um, again, like any other application out there, if you're under-resourcing your application, it's not going to properly perform. So as long as you're properly resourcing it, um, backing up large groups shouldn't be a, a problem at all, whether yeah. you're doing it on-prem or in the cloud. It's all, and obviously, if you're dealing with the cloud, it's all about how long it's going to take, latency, et cetera. Yeah, I, I can tell you, um, you know, for our audience, uh, we have a, a lot of customers who uh, have actually displaced their uh, Hyper-V backup with uh, Five9 Manager Data Center. Uh, they found it to be just as effective and yeah. providing uh, greater cost value, uh, simply from the sense that um, 
they're now getting backup plus monitoring everything that they were getting from their backup vendor plus they're getting what they they would normally have in SCVMM but easier and also SCOM. And absolutely what he's mentioning is uh, Microsoft Data Protection Manager which is their backup product. All right, one more question that came in. Uh, uh, backup is a popular topic right now. Uh, do I do I need do I still need backup uh, exe if I buy MDC or can I use the backup feature? So if you buy um, the MDC product, um, it's part of MDC. Are they no. asking if it, uh, are they asking if it's part of regular manager standard? Um. Well, frankly, uh, uh, person in the audience who wrote that question, uh, could could you please clarify? This one's happening in, in real time. Folks. <laughs> ah, I see. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, so does backup uh, come part of Five Nine Manager Data Center, or is it a, a separate module add-on that I have to purchase? It comes part of it. It's part of the package. So, and I did know the answer to that question, but uh, uh, for those of you in the audience who are considering this or, or looking at this, uh, obviously for, for the current customers, you're already familiar with this, but uh, if you're looking to uh, lower IT costs um, and streamline things into a, a single unified solution, of course, Five9 Manager Data Center is going to displace your existing backup and then going to bring in the extra functionality of monitoring management, uh, you know, role-based administration, all, uh, all sorts of uh, different functionality. Uh, and that would even provide a, a very nice path into uh, your Azure instance and also any sort of additional security you would have on-premise or in the cloud. Absolutely. I was just going through the wizard so people can see it. I'll skip the Azure portion. Well, no, and, 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 since, and since we have fine, uh, I do have a follow-up question here. Um, so could you show, uh, since we do have time left on the docket, could you show the uh, uh, backup to Azure feature? Oh, sure. I uh, can do that. So I think everybody knows what Azure looks like, but I'm going to log in because I actually have to get a, the key. <clears throat> There we go. Just getting into Azure this morning. <laughs> Let's see here. So, um, like I'd mentioned before, um, the only requirement on Azure is to create a storage blob, and um, then once you've created the storage blob, you just it's a cut and paste operation. Um, just give me a moment for my dashboard to render up, and we'll get right into that. I have a few things running. <laughs> All right, let's do I have, there we go, popping up now. Okay, so as you can see here, this is, um, and then if you'll notice there's a lot of stuff here, but what I'm trying to get into is our storage related stuff. Okay, let's see here. I have my resources group. And MDC, here we go, backup. I knew I had one for backup. So I'd already created this. Um, I created in a, my own resource group and then, then underneath that, just for demonstration purposes, I've created a storage account called um, MDC Backup. <clears throat> and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the storage account because this is what I need. this is the information I need to put inside of our, um, our application. So as you can see here, um, this is a normal storage account. All you need to do is um, pop in here. This is where it says access keys. Okay, all right, that's a little odd. <laughs> Let me just see why that's doing that. But typically when you click on this, I'm not sure why this is locked at the moment, but essentially what this is, is you pop in there, there's actually a storage key snapshot. It'll actually show you the account name and the password. Um, I'm a little baffled why it's done this, but you know what I'll do? For uh, just to show for demonstrations, I'll create a second storage account. It might be just that particular one. All right. 
And we can blame this one on Azure. All right. There we go. So just normal storage account. Um, create. Yeah, we have time. That's good. All right. And this is where you do your, obviously, your settings within that storage account. I'm just going to call it test. Actually, I probably won't be able to do that because it's actually a resolvable name. Um, MDC test. And I'm going to do regular resource manager, general purpose, east. Um, this is pure by uh, your, right, what, how you want your data or your backup replicated. Um, if it's on standard or premium, meaning SSD, and then what resource group. I'm going to use an existing one, which is that um, uh, from a different subscription. Just give me one moment. Oops, here we go. There we go. And it, uh, this is where you can configure virtual networks for your storage account, but that's something I don't need. Um, the only thing I need to understand is my access key and my uh, password. Our application deals with the rest of this of all the, essentially accessing the API to um, do backups. So as you can see, the storage account is being created. And I am now, this storage account should just be done. Yep, there we go. And as I said, you go right into that storage account. And um, let me hit refresh. Oh, I'm in the wrong one. It should be uh, MDC training. Where are we? Huh, a little odd that I don't see my training one. But I, uh, I'm having an odd issue, but with with Azure this morning. Um, but but in the in general, this is where it, where it's all about. Let me see if I can actually switch it here. Ah, uh, I think that subscription is um, these these are subscriptions that we on free credits. So um, it may be just because of the script subscription on that. But end result is you're cutting and pasting. You're popping it over here. I wish I could actually give you a demo of that. Let me go pop into the other side here. Once you put these two keys in here. You put set up a schedule. Um, if it's a daily, is it an incremental? Anything of that nature, and any kind of retention settings, which is really cool. So let's say you want to retain the last seven days, but remove everything out other than that. So we have automatic retention settings on that um, that you can set at any threshold, and then you're done. Um, it's essentially an automated operation at that point until you're ready to restore. Sorry that took so long. <laughs> No, I, I think that that was uh, a great. Uh, so, um, Rob, um, that's actually all of the the questions that we have for today's session. Um, awesome. But uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close out this call uh, for current customers. If you uh, need help uh, with your upgrade or have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to your uh, account executive or your support representative. And for uh, uh, new clients, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to sales at 59.com or going to the contact sales uh, button on our 59.com website. Uh, but other than that, uh, we hope everybody has a great uh, rest of the week and we'll talk to you next time. Great. Thank you, guys.